Hey guys, I'm Nick and welcome back to sci Fanatics. Well, do we have a lot of Star Trek news to report on lately? We got the big Comic Con at home event uh, where we got the Prodigy trailer and also uh, the Lower Decks Season 2 trailer, which uh, I'm going to talk about today. So this trailer was had quite a lot of stuff in it. So we're going to go through this trailer shot by shot and, and have a look at all the little um, moments that maybe we didn't pick up on uh, when it was flying through at a fast pace, talk about some of the big wow moments about the uh, Star Trek um, alumni that are going to be voicing uh, this second season of the show. I picked up at least three um, uh, legacy characters or actors that are going to be voicing characters uh, in this season. Uh, so let's take a look at the trailer, break it down and see what we can learn about Star Trek Lower Decks Season 2. So the trailer starts off with our Lower Deckers. It looks like they're doing some sort of maintenance on uh, some sort of satellite when they get uh, pretty much abandoned by the Cerritos, which goes to warp while they're still conducting whatever maintenance they're doing on this uh, satellite here. And they left us. How much oxygen do we have? A lot? A little? Ballpark? Next we get what seems like a kind of a promotional speaker of some kind, very animated, uh, doing a, some sort of presentation uh, to the whole Cerritos crew uh, with what kind of appears like pods in the background which sort of vaguely resemble the, um, the teleporting pods from the old 80s sci-fi movie The Fly. Our next shot has uh, Tendi and Mariner walking through the sort of promenade of what appears to be Free Cloud. Uh, if we compare this photo to one of the shots from season one of Star Trek Picard, the environment they're in here looks very, very similar to what we saw uh, of Free Cloud in that, uh, in that show. Next, we get a shot of Boimler, and he's in the Starfleet uniform, obviously still on board the USS Titan. However, he only has one pip. Somewhere along the line, he's been demoted from junior grade lieutenant to ensign. Next, we see Mariner in some kind of museum where there's uh, uh, artifacts in display cases hanging from the air and some paintings on the back wall and a unicorn and all sorts of weird alien things on display. Next, we get to meet Lieutenant Kayshon, who is the new tactical and security officer. You guys might remember that Lieutenant Shax died at the end of season one. He is his replacement. And Kayshon is a Temerian, which you guys might remember from the Next Generation episode, Darmok. He was that race that spoke in uh, sort of past references or whatever, so it was very hard to understand. Darmok. And Jalad at Tanagra. I remember the words, but I don't understand. Rapunky, when he joined the Seven. I think this is a great choice for this character. I can uh, foresee plenty of really good comedic opportunities here of misinterpretation and people not quite getting what he's talking about. And also some kind of cool in-references as well with uh, the stuff that he's going to come out with. Next, we have Tendi and Mariner in a shuttlecraft attempting to, for some reason, ram the saucer section of the Cerritos. Tendi and Rutherford with a bunch of electrodes hooked up to him and she appears to be giving him some kind of electrical shock. This next scene looks quite interesting. It's got Mariner in her workout gear on board a Cardassian starship or a Cardassian space station holding a Cardassian hostage while she fires a Cardassian phaser. Next, we have a Miranda-class starship in the form of the USS Macduff, I think it is, being pursued through an asteroid field by a bunch of Cardassian galore-class starships. Next, we have Mariner's dad, the Admiral, uh, saying that this could be the year she gets promoted. Dr. Ta'ana asks Tendi if she's got what it takes and she screams yes, as Rutherford says okie dokie. Mariner's in the brig and she's got Tendi and Rutherford there to give her a bit of emotional support. Obviously, Boimler's not with them. At this point, he's probably still on the Titan. And Mariner clearly spends so much time in the brig that she's drawn a little castle in there with a, <laughs> saying Mariner's HQ with a couple of ticks, obviously, for every time she gets thrown into the brig. It's like a little home away from home. Next, we see Boimler on an away mission as part of his duties on board the US says Titan and obviously things are a little bit more fast paced over there because he's in a big firefight with a bunch of packlids. Captain Riker's ordered an emergency beam out and he's screaming like a little girl as the transporter beams him back to the Titan. We're now back at this museum location that we saw earlier and uh, we've got our away team beaming in including our new chief of security Kayshon and also uh, Ensign Jet who I think was described as the Kirk Sunday with Trip Tucker sprinkles. And at this museum they seem to be getting attacked by by some giant mechanized robot kind of creature. Next, we've got Tendi and Mariner in some kind of gambling establishment, having some sort of altercation with a bunch of Norsicans, throwing Latinum at them and running away. We've got Tendi, poor old Tendi, being uh, eaten and then subsequently pooped out by a giant orange slug-like monster, which is kind of a 
rite of passage for any Starfleet officer, really. Next, we get a clip from an episode which seems to include a 2001-style evil computer, voiced by none other than Star Trek legend Jeffrey Coombs. Friend, I'm worried about you. My scans indicate you could lose a couple pounds. Excuse me? In our next shot, we see Rutherford and Tendi putting together a model kit of the USS Cerritos. Next, we see Captain Freeman and Chief Engineer Billups being rocked by an explosion with a the ship they're docked with. Tendi and Dr. Ta'ana being knocked around the uh, Jeffrey's tubes during some kind of emergency. I think this scene is back inside that museum location we've seen several times before with Mariner and Lieutenant Jet being attacked by what seems like some kind of uh, drones whilst on top of a giant skull head. Next is probably the biggest wow moment of the trailer while climbing through a Jeffrey's tube and inhaling some uh, somewhat dodgy fumes. Boimler starts to hallucinate and he begins talking to a commemorative plate with none other than the likeness of Lieutenant Tom Paris on it, voiced, of course, by uh, Robert Duncan McNeil. You've been in tougher spots than this. Thanks, Tom Paris. I am a little worried about the fumes in here, though. You know, since you're talking to a plate. <laughs> Next, we see Boimler and Mariner smashing in a car through a shop front window on a shopping promenade. I've done a video on this uh, scene. If you want to have a look at that, click in the top right corner of the screen here. From the looks of this next shot, it looks like poor old Tendi has somehow managed to get herself transformed into a giant uh, scorpion-like or crab-like creature. Next is an exciting looking battle scene with the USS Titan engaged in a space combat scenario with one of these big uh, souped up pack lid ships. Next we have a shot of what I think is Boimler as an assimilated Borg. The hairstyle looks a bit different though, so I'm not 100% sure this is Boimler or not, but it might be. In this shot we get the exciting return of a classic enemy in the form of the crystalline entity. In a moment from another episode we see the uh, crew having been captured and that Boimler and Rutherford have to rescue them from the Ferengi. And in the final trailer shot we see the typical butting of heads we saw so much of in season one between Freeman and Mariner as uh, Mariner gets dragged off to the bridge by two security officers while her and her mum trade barbs and snarky comments back and forth to one another. I'm really looking forward to Star Trek Lower Decks season two. The trailer looks amazing. Looks like there's going to be plenty of in-jokes to laugh at and uh, some uh, new surprises and and, uh, and and some old friends pop up as well in that uh, in that show. Uh, we're going to have a lot of Star Trek stuff coming up uh, pretty soon. We've obviously got uh, Lower Decks starting um, on August 12th. Uh, I'm pretty sure once that runs its 10 episode season, we're going to be probably straight into Star Trek Prodigy around mid to late October. And then when Prodigy's had its run, uh, we'll probably be starting season two, uh, no, season four, sorry, of Star Trek Discovery uh, in December, uh, before the end of the year, maybe mid-December, maybe late December. Uh, we know it's 2021, so uh, whether they run that, start running that before or after Christmas, your guess is as good as mine. But it looks like we're definitely going to be getting between now and the end of the year, Lower Decks, Prodigy and Discovery Season 4 all starting on our TVs. Can't wait for that one. Guys, please don't forget to uh, to uh, like, to comment, uh, to share and subscribe. Uh, click on my merchandise link uh, uh, in the description where you can pick up some really cool Star Trek themed t-shirts, much like this one. And uh, I'll be back again very soon for my next review. Thanks guys, I'll see you then.